Yeah, buddy. Okay, well, we've done that three or four times now. Everything we can see is bereft of the hand of man. It's powerful and it's these animals, these mountains, these plants, they're doing the same thing they did a thousand years ago. And they're doing the same thing they're gonna do a thousand years after I'm dead. And, and to me, it gives me the sense of, of the brevity of a human life and how important it is to, to do things that make you feel alive. This is basically our toolkit. We've got a set of adjustable pliers that don't really work, and we've got a socket. What'd I tell you? We gotta get him off here now because if it gets worse, he won't get down tomorrow. So he's gonna dictate how things go. He's kind of up and down, I think, right now. Until then, there's not much we can do, so we're just gonna continue to glass for caribou. And if this was an adventure racing scenario, Trav would be hooked on tow right now and we'd be dragging him toward the finish line. You know, we're not gonna push him because we don't have to. I'm definitely going back downhill here condition-wise, so our camp is just down the ridge line. I'm gonna go down there and get in my sleeping bag and hope I feel better in the morning. Keep it rocking. <laughs> Take it slow, take it easy, take breaks. Yeah, thanks guys. You can leave your pack too. If no, I, I need it. Okay. Oh. <coughs> oh. All right, see you guys. See you. Be well, man. Go get them. Oh. Uh. You guys know where my poles are? Uh, yeah. Thanks, Dave. All right, see ya. The Trav headed back to camp a couple hours ago and we've been glassing since then. Yeah, I kind of watched him glassed him get back to camp and it took him a long time. He's not looking like he's getting a whole lot better. In fact, he was starting to go downhill. So we're gonna head back to camp now and kind of take care of him as best we can tonight and make a, make a decision as to what's gonna happen tomorrow morning. If he's not getting better, then we're heading down to the plane. Being out here and feeling that way and knowing Trav, if he's gone downhill as much as he has, then it's not good. You know, we have four days left of the hunt, but it really doesn't matter how many days you got left of the hunt. If your buddy's suffering, it's, uh, you gotta take care of them, number one. And that's what we're gonna do with Trav, because uh, he's one of the toughest dudes I know. So we're gonna make the best decision for him, because he's not gonna make the decision to, to want to pull out of here. I know that. So that's where it becomes the team, and it's up to us to take care of him right now. I just got back to the tent and talked to Trav, and things are not good. He's He's not even opening his eyes. He's, he's in really rough shape. We gotta get him off here now because if it gets worse, he won't get down tomorrow. I puked up all the food and water I ate. We'll get you off the mountain here, buddy. Yeah, I think... It's gonna be okay, Trav. I think it's gonna be fine to get down tonight. Just, if I'm worse in the morning, then it could be a problem. We'll get everything everything together so all we gotta do is pack the tent and be gone now we're trying to move fast here um we're gonna break down camp unfortunately means we won't be rolling the cameras as much as we normally would like but safety is the first priority so we'll do what we can but hopefully hopefully travis is just off the mountain safely Good for your help guys Good job, buddy. Till then. get down there I've done enough death marches and races to know I can make it. Yeah, you got it, bud.
Come on, guys. Mike went with Trav, and we saw them together, but now we can't find them. They're not below us. Mike! You okay, buddy? I know you're not okay. What's that? You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Well done, Travis. Gotta tough it out, buddy. <coughs> I'll get the tent set up and see what I can A lot of guys it wouldn't come off that mountain, I can tell you that. <laughs> Well, about a week ago before we headed out into the bush here, Greg picked up kind of a one-day stomach bug in town, and I think maybe that's what I've been dealing with here. We've got a great water purifying system, so I think the water we've been drinking is fine. Being sick is part of life, and when you're sick, it makes you thankful for your health. So this morning, we got up after getting back late last night, and Travis is doing a little bit better. He's nowhere close to being right. We've got a little bit of logistics here to, to get everybody out. You know, sometimes when you're in the back country, you've got to be prepared to deal with anything. And this is a situation where we got to get trapped out of the bush. We uh, saw a lot of game on this hunt. And unfortunately, sometimes you don't always make it happen. There's many more days of hunting to come. Well, two days after the death march off the mountain, uh, I'm glad to report that I am still alive. Um, I'm still experiencing some symptoms, uh, but I'm hoping that after I get back home to Colorado uh, and, and possibly um, seek medical attention if, if I'm still symptomatic, I, th I think things will resolve themselves. Um, I think we made a good choice to, to come off the mountain, you know, that. Uh, evening when I was really suffering, you know, it kind of came down to, well, I could stay the same, or I could get better, or I could get worse. And in a situation like that, if, if you get worse, um, it was going to be tough to, to get down that hill and, and get through the willows and alders. So I think we made a good choice. Um, you know, it is disappointing, obviously, to, to end a hunt like that. And um, sometimes that's life. You set a big goal, sometimes you hit it, and sometimes you don't and uh, either way you, you take something from it. Um, I know for me, in, in reflecting back, you know, it's a good reminder of the importance of fitness for a hunt like this, and, and I was definitely fit going in, but I think in hindsight, uh, taking a little more attention to detail um, with cleanliness of food and water could have made the difference there. Looking back on my time hunting in the Yukon uh, for the first experience here, it's, it's really been something special to be out here and see these animals in this wild country uh, that's not influenced by man, to see animals doing their natural thing without hunting pressure, uh, that's just something incredibly valuable um, to uh, be out here with, with Greg and his team. I mean, they are doing this to the full highest level and it's, it's been an honor to, uh, to be a part of that, uh, to learn from that. And I would also say, you know, if you're sitting at home and you're thinking, hey, I'd like to make a big adventure. Maybe it's coming out west. 
maybe it's coming up north like I did, uh, you can do it. You know, it's gonna be a challenge. You're gonna have to plan with your finances, with your fitness, with your gear, and with your tactics. But you can do that, and uh, if, if you want to make it happen, even if it's a multi-year goal, um, you can. And I highly recommend making that investment in yourself because uh, it's, it's going to be an incredible experience that you always remember. Sometimes you have to learn the hard way, and on this trip that happened with Giardia because I allowed my water filter to freeze overnight, rendering it ineffective.